Lord, you know, you're getting my attention in something. We as a body of believers have to understand that we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And God wants wholeness in each area, all right, each area. Start eating correctly, because after that, I mean, I went to fresh and easy, them Twinkies, and I had, I had two, three bags of Oreo, not just the regular Oreos, the double stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, I put all that to the side. I got raspberries, I got watermelon, I got bananas. Why? It's because God has given each of us something to do, okay? You can only do it through the vessel that you're in. That's right. All right? If you tear this vessel up, you're not getting another one. All right? Mm -hmm. So let's start being conscious of what we eat, when we eat. You know, let's start being conscious of that. All right? Amen? Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I am going to start doing that. And then, you know, I just thought of another, an, another thing I want to share with you. There was a, a good friend of mine, very anointed man of God that ate his way into heaven. Yeah, he did. He did. And everybody kept telling him because he was gaining so much weight, so much weight. And everybody kept telling him, you need to change your diet, man. You need to do this. And Apostle Green, he left out of here, you know, because of arteries, you know. So check yourself. Eh? You know, do that. Check yourself. Turn your Bibles to Hebrew 10 and 23. 10 and 23? Yes, 10 and 23. Because what I want to talk about today, uh, it's, it, it's for the believer, okay? And a lot of times we wonder, you know, look, why isn't this working for me? What's happening? What's going on? Okay? And I want to talk about that today. I, I really do. I want to talk about some of the issues why in Christians' lives things aren't coming together. I look and God wants us to be examples to the world, examples to one another. God started reminding me of, of some issues in, in, in my life, also in my, my wife's life, okay? And one was I had went through something and man, it hit my credit and, and my credit was like double dumped, okay? So I started praying and believing God to reverse that, okay? And in less than five and a half months, God took my credit score a hundred and some points, okay, which is unheard of. We were leaving to, to get out of debt, completely out of debt, all right, completely out of debt. God has done that. We owe no man nothing but to love him except on our home, okay. But I'm no different than you. The difference is is if you're ready to go through the process. See, there is a process to this. See, getting up every morning, looking at the credit score, praying over it. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. Look like it got worse for a minute. Praying over it, praying over it. Praying over our bills, believing God for our finances, believing God that every one of our, our, our debtors will be history. You have to go through the process, people. There is a process to what you do. Now, if you're at Hebrews 10 and 23, let's read that together. Matthew, stand up and read that for me. Ready in season and out. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. The scripture says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Holy Spirit, you have your way. Father, let it be none of me but all of you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that what you have poured into me, Lord God, you will bring out. I thank you, Lord God, that every ear, every heart is open. And Father, as we receive your word, I thank you, Lord God, that we will be better for it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that every issue, every, every circumstance in our life, Lord God, will be handled by your word and through your word. Amen. For Father, you have given us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for that victory. We thank you for the precious and divine blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, it is by that blood that we approach you today. So Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you in Jesus' name. And look closely at this. Let us. 
The us is believers. That's you and I. This is not talking to the heathen, to the unbeliever. It's you and me. It says, let us hold fast. You see, think about, and, and I'm, I'm going to talk to the men for a minute, and I'm going to talk to the women. Think about, brothers, when, 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 when a good uh, football game, basketball game is on, your team wins, and how you start talking to people about your team. All right? Man, did you see so-and-so on that? Did you see how many points he got? Did you see this? Did you see that? All right? You're making a, a confession. You're making a confession. You're making a public announcement about something else and someone else. So when, you, when it says, let us hold, that means to hold something. You've literally got to grab it. It has to be in your hand. In this case, it has to be in your heart. You can never, you can never hold fast to a confession that you don't believe, you don't really truly believe. You can never do that. And that's one of the biggest issues with the body of believers. Yes, we see the word. We accept the word. But we don't really believe the word. See, we have faith in God, but understand, faith and believing is two different things. People want to run those two things together. Believing means I accept something is true. That's what it means. Faith means that I act on what I believe. See, I believe if I go get in the car, that that car is going to start for me. That's what I believe, OK? So when I go out to the car, I sit in it. Remember, I believe that it's going to start. But I don't have any faith until I act on what I believe by taking the keys, putting them in the ignition, and turning it. I could sit there for months. CSI could come find my body, see it with the keys in my hand. I died believing. You take a person that is dying of malnutrition. And the doctor tells him, uh, if you eat, you're going to live. They bring him some food. He says, do you believe if you eat this, you're going to live? He says, yes, doc, you told me. But yet and still, he never acts on it and puts anything in his mouth. He dies right there. Now, whose fault is that? Is that the doctor's fault, or is that his fault? His fault. So a lot of the things that we've been blaming God for is our fault. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. When things are not working in your life, you have to reevaluate yourself. You see what I'm saying? When my car is, look, look. I've had a, a little issue with my radiator in my car and, 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 and one of my tires, because I got those wheels and I hit a bump a while back and one of my wheels shakes when I get to a certain speed limit. Man, I've been driving like that for a minute. Okay, all right. I just didn't feel like spending the money. I said, okay, when I when I hit when I hit sixty, I know I'm gonna get a little shake. You know what I mean? And I, I like, and I know I checked the radiator. Uh, I know what's wrong with the car. Now, to everyone else, they think that the car is operating to capacity, but I know it's not. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There is things that is malfunctioning there. Mm -hmm. All right. The check engine light is on because of what I need done. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not going to stop. I already know that, but it's the check engine light is on. Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. That's giving me a warning saying that, you know what, you need to check the engine. A lot of times, we're going through life, and God has put on our check heart light, mm -hmm. and we still keep pushing, mm -hmm. knowing something's out of whack. No, instead of taking it and getting it fixed, addressing the issues. So this scripture says, let us, the believers, hold fast the confession. Confession is what you speak out of your mouth. That's what it is. Hold fast the confession of our what? Faith. faith. What is the confession of your faith? Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. So your confession is Jesus. That's your confession. It's what he has done for you that you're entitled to. See, you are entitled to certain things. You're entitled to certain things. My mother, she's alive. But she has a trust, OK? We went over this trust. We've looked at it. 
So I know what I'm entitled to when she leaves. There's nothing anybody could do about that because that's already been entrusted to me. That's the same thing with the benefits that God has entrusted for you by the death of Christ. But if you don't hold on to those, if you don't make that your confession, it's not for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I say it's a process, look at your name and say it's a process. It's a process. Look at your name and really say it's a process. It's a process. People, if you get this, you're going to go somewhere with this. You're going to go somewhere with this. If you lock this in, you go somewhere with this. Okay? Because what we don't want is the process. See, in our society today, we have microwaves, everything is instant this, instant that. You know, we have, we have a coffee pot with coffee grinds to go in the coffee. I don't ever use it hardly. Why? Because I can nuke mine in five minutes and be on my way. I ain't got to sit there and wait no 10 minutes or nothing. I'm in a hurry. I don't want to go cut my own fruit. Man, I can go to the store and they got it already cut. Man, I don't want to wait five minutes for a hamburger. I want to go to a drive through that gets me in and out in three seconds. <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest. That's the way we live our lives. We've been prone like that. We stand in a line at the grocery store, and we're looking for the shortest line. <laughs> and then we'll say, and they got five cash registers, though. I don't know why they don't put somebody else to open another cash register. <laughs> and then you turn to somebody and say, don't, don't that right. All these people up in here. Why? It's because you're in such a hurry. Everything is fast paced now. Everything is moving at a pace, you know, like, like, like yesterday. You know, our children, they ready to be out of college and they just in preschool. <laughs> and half of them act like they should have been graduated from college. <laughs> but see, last week, the man of God stood here and, and, and he shared a prophetic word. And see, I told you last week that that word was for something, and I didn't know what. And see, you got to always know that when God speaks a prophetic word and, 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 and it catches you, hold on to that. Just, 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 just turn it. Just turn it. Just turn it. And so as I kept thinking on it, what you said was, it's time to get the house in order. And I kept turning this, turning this, turning this. And I'm like, okay, Lord, well, what are you saying here? And so... This is what I'm talking about today. It's a process. Get your house in order. That's the title of this message. It's a process. Get your house in order. Understand this. Whenever you, you ladies, when you clean your house, you usually have a place you're going to start. All right? And then you have a place you're going to go to next. You have a process. All right? You have a process. Even in the washing. You know, us men, we don't have a process in that. We throw soap, bleach, everything all in the same washing machine. And it's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> My sister said that's mad. <laughs> but you know, that's the way we think. That's, see, that's the way we think. You see what I'm saying? We don't want to go through the process. We want it quick. But there is a process. There is a process for your success. He said, get your house in order last week, all right? To be in order is to arrange things in a certain arrangement. You know, I'm a very orderly person, but I get disarrayed. Then I get orderly, then I get disarrayed. I, I can look at my desk. I clean my desk, it'd it, it be immaculate, I clean the area, and my wife was just telling me the other day, she said, man, you're the only person to clean your office, clean your desk, and then three hours later, it'd be messed up again, but I know where everything is. <laughs> don't get that, don't get that twisted. She can come in there within that mess and move something, and I know she been there, okay? Why? Because that's my mess. Even though to you it looks messy, to me it's in order. You see what I'm saying? But see, there is an order to that. In order to get your house in order, you're going to have to go through the process, all right? It means to organize things properly. It is also having things in a functional place. Functional. 
See, we talk about dysfunctional families. What about dysfunctional people? Now, I'm not talking about people, when, we, when you say dysfunctional, you think somebody alcoholic, abuse, all of this. No, let's talk about us, the believer. Being dysfunctional truly just means that you're not functioning the way you should be. See, you're functioning in a natural aspect when you're supernatural people. So if you're functioning in a natural aspect, you're going to get a natural result. If you're functioning in a supernatural aspect, you're going to get a supernatural res response, results. Listen, people, look, 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 check this out. Everything about you is supernatural. Everything. You was born again. That's supernatural. The Lord Jesus that we believe in came from a virgin birth. Supernatural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We call things that be not as though they were. Supernatural. Everything we do is supernatural. So anytime you be a supernatural believer, step into a natural position, you're dysfunctional. That's why the devil wants to keep you in a natural position so you can't move in a supernatural position. Why? It's because in the natural, he controls the natural. Don't get it twisted. He controls the natural. But when you step in the supernatural, God controls the supernatural. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now when we come back to that scripture and it says, let us hold fast to our confession of our faith, we're confessing the supernatural, not the natural. But too much of the time, we're confessing the natural. I ain't got no money. Every time I get paid, I'm broke. Don't nobody love me. Don't nobody care for me. See, we're always constantly confessing the natural. So we're over here in this territory where he can really work. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Don't nobody love you. Don't nobody love you. Don't nobody care for you. No, you're not pretty. You're not smart. You're not this. You're not that. See, you're in the natural. If you come out of that and say what God says about you, see, that's where your confession of faith is. It's lining it up with the words of God. See, when you say, hmm, I got all wisdom in me, greater he is in me than he is in the world. Shoot, I'm not broke. I may be temporarily without funds, but I'm way, way far from broke because he said he would supply all my need according to his riches and glory. See, you've got to say what God says. See, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? You ever been with somebody that just, 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 just don't line up with what you want to talk about? And you be with them, and they just, blah, 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 and you be like, man, hurry up and get away from this. <laughs> you guys, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, man, man. Like, and then you get, when, you get, when you walk away, you're like, <laughs> and you like them, you like them a lot, but they're always so negative, so this. I mean, man, the sun could be out and they're telling you it's going to rain next Tuesday. You know, see, there are people that do that. There are people that will find the negative in you. And you hold on to the negative. You've got to start holding on to the positive of what God has said. See, because in order to get your house in order, you're going to have to rearrange some things. You're going to have to clean out some things. See, that's what putting things in order is. That's why so many of the believers are not living as successful in this life as they should. They don't want to take time to clean their own house. Hello? Hello? All right, let me clean my trunk. All right? <laughs> when I said that, he showed me the trunk of my car. I got all kinds of stuff trunk of my car. Praise God. Anyway. <laughs> no, she could. She good. She good. She good. My wife good. She, she good for me. But now, we got to do this. So now, let's take some time and, 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 and go back and look at you right there in Hebrews. Let's start at Hebrews 10 and 19. All right, because I want to start and read into this. And look what it says. Therefore, brethren, see, talking to believers. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way. Say that with me. A new and living way. That's what you need. A new and living way. 
man, people listen. There's some beautiful things out there. There's, there's, there's countries and islands that we haven't even seen that we're entitled to see. There is a beautiful world out there. The Bible says that God gives every good and perfect gift. And those, perfect and, and those good and perfect gifts are for the believer. But in order for us to obtain them, we have to get ourselves in order. A lot of people do not understand why they can't get out of debt, why they can't get themselves right. It's because, first of all, God will not bless a mess. Your finances are out of order. You got to get them in. You got to sit down. You ain't got a dime. You ain't got a dime, but you need to sit down and map out and say, this is what I owe, this is what I owe, this is what I owe, this is what I owe. So that if God sends somebody up into your life and tell you, say, how much do you need to get out of debt? You can tell them to the penny. Okay. You can, matter of fact, I used to keep a little paper in mind. I said, you ever send somebody, I don't know what you're telling, I'm going to show them. See, I, 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 I knew you was coming. <laughs> I had it, and I'm serious, you know? Because you need to be able to know exactly what's going on. See, that's order. That is order. My wife gets on me about the garage. Same way with my office. I'll clean it up, and three months later, I can't get my car in the garage. I can't, and I'm like, shh. Because she'll tell me, and I, instead of putting things in its place, I'll come down and just put stuff, you know, wherever. And it just adds up. But to me, it's out of order. But if you see in my garage, you would say, man, this is really in order. Because we do have we boxes lined up, everything. But to me, it's out of order. You know what's out of order in your life. You know what's out of order. So it's time to put it in order. Now it says, having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which has consecrated for, which, which has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Now catch this. First thing it said, assurance of faith. Then it says, speaks about evil conscience. Then it tells us to hold on to the profession, what we're speaking, all right, without wavering, all right? See, as I said earlier, one of the main reasons that faith is not working for many people is because you're out of order. Faith works. Faith works. And I'm telling you, it works. I've seen God many a time do things in my life, wife's life, Faith works. It doesn't work because you believe it. It works because God said it that way. There's a lot of people that don't believe that God does what he does or faith works. But that's on them. That's on them. You know, there's a lot of people that don't like milk. But that don't change me from liking it. You see what I'm saying? See, you've got to make the choice to decide that I don't accept God's word for what it is. Right. See, we have so many people that's living on past things that have happened to them. Okay, there's some bad things that have happened to people. Bad things. You know, children that were molested. Children that were abused. There are numerous things that have happened. But listen, there has to come a time in your life you get over that. There has to be a time in your life you may not forget it, but you got to get over it. That was 45 years ago, and you're still letting what happened 45 years ago dictate your life today. See, you've got to come to a point to say, no longer am I going to let my past dictate my future. You have to do that. That comes by making a choice. That comes by believing God and not believing your past. You have to understand that, see, and, 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 and this is for some brothers here and some that may be listening on, 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 on over the Internet. Listen, okay, you come out, you come out to penitentiary, you got a record. But you are saved, brother, in Christ. You got to believe that God will open the door yes, right. for you. Yes, right. mm -hmm. yes, right. You got to believe that. Yes, right. Yes, right. You got to believe that. Yes, right. So you got to believe that God will work in your behalf. Amen. Oh, well, you just don't understand. Yes, I do. I served many years in the penitentiary and came out. And the job that God gave me, 
was, now check this out, assistant manager at a Burger King. And I said, man, I ain't never ate, and this is honest truth, I had never even eaten at a Burger King in my life to that time. And I said, man, I said, I said, now I'm up in here slinging these burgers. You know, I said, Lord Jesus. I said, Lord, but see, God had a plan. A month and a half after that, I was in the freezer getting a box of hamburgers, and he spoke to me. He said, I'm going to raise you up like Joseph. And I said, oh, man, okay. I, you know, so I went on about my business. Six months later, they came to me for a promotion to general manager. I didn't know nothing about them folk business. Not one thing. But what I, point I'm trying to get you to understand is that they took an ex-felon, put him over a company that did over $3 million a year cash business, baby, coming through there. See, that's God. A year and a half later, he took the same ex-convict, raised him up that not in, 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 in the country there could not be a Burger King built without me going to site and approving it. This was God. Man, I'm flying all over. Man, I'm, I'm like, shoot, they paying for everything from my shoe shine to the cleanest bill. I'm, I'm, like, I'm loving this. This is God. I go to a meeting. All big franchise owners, these are millionaires, just meeting, and it was in Florida. And I'm in the meeting, and they all talking about where they went to school at. And the man asked me, and I told him I went to San Quentin U. <laughs> and so he like, huh? And so I walked out, you know, the little break room, I walked out. And so I guess it hit them by that night. Because two days, we were there for a week. Two days before that, we were all going to dinner and stuff after the, you know, after the, uh, uh, the seminar. We were going. I was out in the lobby, there wasn't nobody out there. Didn't nobody show up. I said, man. So in the meeting, in the conference, they started staying away from me. But you know what it was? It was a testimony to God's great and mighty power. Why am I saying this? Because it didn't happen because I was smart. It didn't happen because I was trained. It happened because I was a praying man ready to walk in faith. You have to know that faith is what God has given you. Faith is what's going to take you there. You have to understand that. Yes, your faith is going to be challenged. You know, people amaze me. Pastor, I'm going through this. You're supposed to go through something. You're a Christian, ain't you? But you don't know. I said it don't matter how much you're going through. Stop always, you understand me, asking God to get you out the fire and pray to have him make you fireproof. So you can stand up in that heat. Because it's in the heat, it's in the heat that you're developed. See, it's in that heat where you grow, where you don't know where anything's coming from, your meal, your food, your home. You don't know where anything's coming from. That's where you meet the face of God. That's where your testing comes, when there's no way out but him. And see, he uses those times. Why? It's because he gets his glory in. you got to say, man, God did this. And everybody know God did it because they know you didn't have a dime to do it. You see, that's what he's talking about when he says, let us, the believers, hold fast tight to our confession of faith. Because him that promised is faithful. You have to know this. Now, in there, there's, there's, there's four things that I'm going to go over. But first, you need to look at your name and ask them, neighbors, you out of order. They ain't going to tell you, but just smile at them and say, anyway, I believe. Can I have some water, please? Oh, definitely. Thank you. You see, the reason you ask them that is because you want them to, you want them to click. You want them to think, are oh, you really out of order? Just like me driving my car. Don't nobody know it's shaking but me. You, yeah, because you ride it. You ride it. <laughs> She ride it. She ride. She, she you know what? She don't drive it. Thank you. She thank you so much. Mm mm. What? Oh man, I don't know. But anyway, I drive it because I have gotten used to it. I know when I get a little bit over fifty-five, I'm gonna get that little shake, 
okay? But I know if I get it up to like 65, it's gone, okay? You know, I know to keep my eye on my, on, on, on my temperature gauge, and if it starts moving just a tad bit, I need to go in to the mechanic and have him put some, you know, freeze on in it. See, I got, it, I got my system down, but my car is not running right. See, a lot of us have our system down in our life, even though we're shaking in spots, running hot in spots, but we know if we just, you know, get past it, but we don't never get it fixed. Then we wonder why we keep going through the same thing. See, through the same process, all right? It's because you got things that are out of order. Yes, Lord. See? Mm. Uh, See, there's certain things that, 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 that'll keep you out of order. Yes. Allowing things in your life that cause disorder, yes. that cause dysfunction, that cause confusion. See, allowing people and things in your life that you know cause that. Mm -hmm. There's certain people that you know that, man, that's all they do. That's all they're doing. You still just, 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 come on by and have dinner. Man, meet them and make Mickey D's so you can eat and run. Stop bringing that into your life. Stop bringing that chaos into your life. Stop bringing those people into your life. Because what you're actually doing, you're bringing those people into your space, to your space that God has given you. You know what that's like? That's like the environment that God had created for Adam in the Garden of Eden. If he went outside there and brought all kind of junk back in to eat, he started making it look like stamping his son or something. You see what I'm saying? It'd be a chaos. You've got to stop that. Another thing is speaking the wrong things, things that are negative, mm, mm, mm. things that are unconstructive, things that are harmful, just harmful, harmful not only to you but to others. And I don't mean profanity. Speaking negative and, 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 and unconstructive things about your own self. Riding in the car. I've never, I've never had a good life. Well, I've never had anyone love me. Everyone that has came into my life has treated me bad. I've never had a real good job. See, you're speaking negative to yourself. You may be speaking the truth. No, no, thank you, Holy Ghost. I shut that in you. He said, no, you're not speaking the truth. He said, you may be speaking a reality, but that doesn't mean it's the truth. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. You may be speaking a reality, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth. Your life is not over. You see what I'm saying? But you're already condemning yourself. You're already saying what you can't do, where you can't go. Where you already put your own limitation. See, that's not in line with, word, with God's word. Anything that's not in line with God's word is unconstructive. Unconstructive. Jesus lived three, 33 years on this earth. Three years, three and a half of those years where we have, well, his young childhood is only mentioned like that in the Bible. But we have more of his ministry, the three and a half years of his ministry. And you never, ever seen him say anything negative about his life. Never. Never. Now, don't you think some things were going on negative? They were trying to kill him. They was calling him a devil. But he had enough to understand what his mouth controlled. You know, when we was growing up, you know, some of our parents used to tell us, you know, you got a big mouth, you need to watch your mouth. <laughs> you know, and why were they doing that? It's because we were talking out the side of our neck, as they would say. We see a lot of Christians still talk out the side of their neck because they're not talking in faith. Thinking the wrong things that are negative unconstructive and harmful thoughts, living the wrong way, doing things that are negative, unconstructive, doing things that are harmful. You see, you have to understand that there is a process. You see, the first thing that, 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 that we look at in this process is where it said having full assurance of God. Mark eleven twenty three, 
actually 22. It says, have faith in God. This is Jesus. He said, have faith in God. Then he said, Jesus answered and said, truly I say unto you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believe that, they, that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Now check what he says. He first starts out with telling them, have faith in God. See, a lot of people talk like they got faith in God. They ain't got, no, they ain't got as much faith as this, this podium right here in God. They, they talk a good game. But the moment something comes up in their life, they're looking for human ways out, okay? Not divine ways, human ways. See, faith in God means whether you pay my light bill or not is not going to change the way I believe, God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if I got to sit up here in the dark, yes, I'm going to sit up here in the dark and praise God. Amen. See, that's what faith is, true faith is. True faith is saying that, you know what, I know that God's going to do it. Maybe it's not done in my time frame because, see, we try to put God on a clock. Well, well, I've been believing for this for five years. Maybe you haven't been ready for it for five years. See, there's a process that you have to mature and grow to before you can go. See, again, even in Mark 11, 22 to 23, we see the same process again that we see in Hebrews. One, it said, having full assurance in God, not having an evil conscience, remember? Well, here in, in Mark 11, 23, it says, do not doubt. Understand what an evil conscience is. Because see, man, I don't know how, when we start talking about evil words, evil mind, we thinking about like people like mass murderers, like, like, like you know, Manson, Charles Manson, and, and Hitler and stuff. No, an evil mind is a mind that's thinking opposite God. That could be in your walk. What do I mean? Instead of where he tells you to have faith, you, you just have so much doubt in your mind. That's an evil mind. See, that's an evil mind. When he tells you in his word and he shows you in your life who you are to him and what he wants to do, you turn around and say it's not possible. That's an evil mind. I told you a few weeks ago, when you sit here and you say, I am broke. I am sick. I am confused. This church is called the Great I Am, right? God's name is I Am, right? right. So what you're really literally saying is, the Great I Am is sick. The Great I Am is broke. You see how you can turn that? If God is not without, neither are you. <coughs> well, you don't know my situation. He knows your situation. He knew you was going to mess up before you messed up. Don't you understand that? He already had a solution for you before you even messed up. But he's going to teach you something in the middle of the mess up. He's going to get you out. But you're going to have to go through to come out, it's a process. This is what we don't want. We don't want the process. We want it microwave style. Nuke me, nuke me, Lord, and let me be rich. Nuke me, Lord, and let me be the holy of holies. This is a process. This is a lifestyle. It doesn't happen overnight. The first example that we see of divine order in the house of God is the tabernacle. God gave them the pattern for the tabernacle. They didn't create this themselves. God gave them the pattern for the house of God, the tabernacle, okay? Only God gives the pattern for the house of God. Only God gives the pattern for the house of God. He also gives the pattern for his services in that house. He also gives for his ministers, for those that were served in the house, God does that. A man doesn't do that. See, see, some men do do it, but only God should be the one that does that. None of us should. Now, everything in the tabernacle had to be in place. 
Those priests were told that this had to be, don't let the candles go out, don't let this happen, don't let that happen, don't walk behind that veil, you understand? But once a year, don't have no sin in your life. When you walk behind that veil, make sure you put that rope on with that veil just in case you got some sin in your life. We can drag your butt out. Everything was in order. But it's the same thing with your house. Does he not live in you? Scripture says that you, your body is a temple of the living God. So everything in you should be as a God-ordained pattern. Everything should be in place. Your faith, your confession, your thinking. It's an order. It's an order. And this stuff don't come, this stuff, this stuff don't come, this stuff don't come easy. And it don't come overnight. Don't think that you know what? Shoot. It was years. Before I, I, I say I could walk in some true faith. I used to talk a good game. <laughs> Man, shoot. Shoot, I'd be in the car talking to them, them two nickels in my pocket. I like, man, I'm broke as I don't know what. And the people, <laughs> I was like, I'd be leaving church, man. I'd be leaving church like that, talking in my mind. I'm like, man, I'm hungry. I ain't got nothing but a, a couple of hot dogs or something, you know. Hey, man, you know, I, I'm saying this. And I'm in church, man. Look, you want to get even better than that? I'm in ministry. I don't know how we gonna get to where we going. Shoot, ain't got no money for no ticket. You know, people ain't offered a dime. I don't know how we gonna do this? I don't, and, and I'm going through this, and, but I'm playing it off. Mm -hmm. How you doing, brother? Bless, highly favored. Mm -hmm. I'm the head, not the tail, brother. Mm -hmm. All right, you know we get it down. God bless you, brother. But on the inside. Man, I'm, I'm torn up from the floor. I didn't know that a whole bunch of people around me was torn up from the floor until I got set. <laughs> I said, y'all were just as messed up as I was. <laughs> you know, it would have helped to have known. That's why I didn't tell nobody. I thought everybody had it together. I said, she was, y'all was all out of order too. <laughs> We talk about it now, you know, as we are growing in the world, we didn't know nothing. Didn't know how to do nothing. We were talking about doubt and faith. Because that's all we knew. We were raised in houses full of doubt. Raised in houses full of negativity. Went to schools full of negativity. So I grew up with negativity. So the only thing I didn't look at was negative. And then I come and get saved, and they tell me don't talk negative. Man, that's the only thing I know. Okay. That's like going to France and say don't talk English. <laughs> hey, baby, I like to talk English. That's all I know. But it took time. It was a process. You have to grow into this. You have to be developed into this. It's just not going to happen overnight. Your bills are not going to get paid off overnight. Yes, God can do that. God can do what he chooses. You can go to your bank. And and, 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 and and there could be miraculous money in there. And I know this to be a fact because I know a couple of people that went to their account and it was a hundred and some thousand dollars in there. When that preacher said that, he said, he said, and the lady asked him, he said, he said she, what should I do? He said, run back and get all you can while you can. Hello? <laughs> he said, give me while you can right now. He said, it might, he said it might not be there, I need to be here tomorrow. <laughs> he said, but you know, God can make happen whatever he wants to make happen, okay? But you got to know that you got to do your part. All right, I'm trying to wrap this down. So the first thing is, having full assurance of faith in God, not in your job, not in your ability, not in your wife, not in your husband, not in God, man, in God. See, your job can end. Yeah, it can end. Good work, it can end. I know this to be a fact. I've shared this in here. December 13th, what was it, 2008, Bill? Yeah. Went to work, you understand, man? I had a position. I was making close to three thousand dollars. It was about yeah, close to three thousand dollars a week. You know, doing what I did. Walked in there and twenty some of us got laid off. And the way they did it, they played it real smooth. <laughs> I give you credit, they played it smooth. They said, uh, we had just finished one 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 project. And they said, uh, you guys call in on Monday and see where the new location is at. I said, hey, I ain't never had to call nobody to find out no new location because I'm using it on site a week before anybody else. I'm like, what? 
I knew something was wrong that Friday. So I did what they told me Monday. Well, we had to lay off 27 people. Wasn't but 30 something more working there. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I looked for work. I went out and looked for work, you understand me? And I didn't know what was happening. Couldn't find none. Man, and I was good at what I did. Man, I had an outstanding resume. And I'm like, what the heck is this? A year and a half later, still looking for work. Still looking for work. And then it hit me. Maybe you just don't want me to go back. So what did I do? I started putting my time that I would be at work into the word. I made it my job. And I had to trust God as my employer. So you know I'm putting in work, so I don't know how it's going to come. This is 2015, correct? Yes. Oh, that's, what, what, what is that, seven years ago? Yeah. Two years later, my wife gets hurt on a job, okay? Hurt on her job, she has to come off work. We like what? We done we done lost we done lost close to eight thousand dollar one eight thousand dollar a month job. Now we about to lose close to a five thousand dollar a month job, which happened. Now we down to like not even less than half of what we had with the same bills. The same and even had picked up a couple more. The same bills, but we got the same God. Amen. Yeah, the same God. And we had to start moving in faith. We had to start getting things in order. You know, we had to start looking at creditors that want money. You know, because we was able to pay the stuff. Now, man, we got we we juggling money like 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 monkeys on a football. Okay, shoot, it got to a point where you know what. I want to tell him, man, look, what I do, I put your name in a hat. And the one I pull, that's the one we pay. And if you call me back, your name ain't even going in the hat. <laughs> I had to get it real. I said, shoot, you don't know. It was tight. But we had to go through. Everything somehow got paid. God kept us. Don't ask me. We paid. Look, we had car notes then. Paid off the cars. That we had the church responsibility. But God never let us down. Why? It's because we had full assurance in God. That was seven years ago. And today we can honestly say, you understand me, that through God, we're debt free. We can say that. This church, we don't owe nothing on nobody. We don't owe nothing. We pay our rent every month. You understand? We don't owe nothing. We don't have one. The lady called from Dun and Bradstreet. You guys, uh, 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 you don't have any open credit? I said, we don't owe nothing. We don't have nothing. We don't have no, we don't have no open credit. She said, but, but I said, no, 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 lady. I said, no, no, we, we, everything paid off here. Everything paid off here. You see, this is, it, 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 see, like, the, like my friend said the other day, he said, he said I like this church. This is, he said, this is, he, how do he say, he said, this is the first small big church I ever seen. Because <laughs> <laughs> the way he said, he said, shoot, God showed you, you use every corner of this place. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, trying to figure out how to use some more. You know, we got to start. The Bible says, do not despise small beginnings. So you got a bunch of bills. Oh, well. Get them in order. Take those things out. Don't hide them. Take them out. Put them down there and say, Lord, this is what I got. And put full assurance in God to get those things taken care of. Don't be trying to run and hide from them. Put them right there. Then if you, and you want to get out, put them out there. Start paying more and more on your car. Ain't that right? Huh? Hello. Do help, don't. Hello. Pay that right, so right off. We ain't had a time, Hello. don't. Hello. Two years in advance. Jesus. Uh -huh. Just a few dollars more. We got to use wisdom in this, people. We got to be about God's business. God does not want you burdened down with all them bills and responsibilities. That's why you have problems when it comes to giving. And I 
got this to do, I got that to do. So who always comes up short? God. And then we play this thing in our head. God to understand. One thing we didn't do, we never missed our tithes. And our never. Uh, why? It's because the only way and avenue that God has set for the believer to bless you economically is through your giving. Nothing else. True. Nothing else. That's why even ministers, even myself, I tithe and I give above my tithe and offering. Why? It's because I know my tithe, that just gives me the seven, you know, the seven blessings over there in Malachi. It keeps me, you know, from rebuking, you know, the rebuke the devourer, you know, blessing all that. But see, the offering is where I get the multiplication on. See, I ain't stupid. See, I can't I can't spell that good. But Brother Kira, I can add. I said, shoot, <laughs> multiplication, single. Multiplication, I said, shoot, I'm giving a whole bunch over here. Okay. And this is why God does this. This is why God does this. You know, and I'm telling you, it works. It works. It works. It works if you trust him. All right. Um, the next part of that was saying not having an evil conscience. Okay. What, what, what does that mean? I mean, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a wrong outlook, man. That's a wrong viewpoint. That's wrong thinking. That's what that is. That's why over in Romans 12 and 2 it says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, all right, that you may prove, not God, he knows his word works, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But see, we think that because of what it says over in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we think that we're a new creature in Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we think everything is okie-dory. What has happened is your spiritual man has changed, but your thinking hasn't changed. So you got to put something in. All right. Kenroy, you're very familiar with the uh, processing of computers and different things of that nature. Could you give us a brief description of when you have a hard drive that you need to put other documents on, but you want you, you you need to clean that one off and put the fresh on. What is the process for that? You got a hard drive, and what you want to do, you want to get everything off of this hard drive and put and start putting all fresh information on that hard drive. He said you got to first take the current information, if you want it, find a place to put it, or if you don't want to erase it, uh -huh. okay? And then after that, um, yeah, up the whole, what you want to put on it, you just copy that information onto the new He said then if you want to put it on there, if you room enough, he says that then you just take that new information and put it on there. Uh -huh. But that process is called formatting. Yes. You have to first format that drive, correct? correct. Formatting the drive means in erasing it. That's like what we would consider renewing. Formatting your mind from that old junk and putting on new information in your database, okay? Because a lot of information that we have picked up through life is not valuable to us. It's not. I mean, come on, man. I love my daddy. The lines of stuff my daddy taught me, man, that stuff don't work. <laughs> if he was lying today, I'd tell him, man, that stuff, where you get that garbage from? <laughs> and he really talked like it worked. And I'm like, man, that stuff, man. I, and you know, my mama, she had a lot of wisdom and stuff, and had a lot of stuff she did did work, but what they were giving me was stuff that they did back there in Arkansas and Mississippi. <laughs> Man, it don't work here in California. I ain't got no, man, look, I ain't walking to school barefooted, so I ain't learning nothing from rocks, stepping on rocks. Okay? I ain't got to go out and slap no pigs, so I ain't learning nothing out there in a the hog pen. You see what I'm saying? So all that information they gave me, I had to just get rid of that. 
And then, I, and then in the streets, people teaching me stuff in the, in the streets. Divorced women trying to teach married women how to, how to keep their hood. <laughs> what sense does that make? You gotta shut that foolishness down, man. Deal with somebody that got a happy marriage. Be trying to listen to nobody all bitter and evil and talking about, yeah, girl, I'm gonna tell you, girl. Man can't do nothing for me. And you look at her, you say, shoot, no man wanna do nothing for you. <laughs> Keep it real. You got to keep this real, this, and, 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 and sometimes qualify the people that's giving you the information. Yes, sir. Qualify them. Yes, sir. Man, ain't nothing ever happened in your life. And how you, if it worked, why ain't it work for you? You know, qualify the people. Shoot, this don't take the information, man. I ain't gonna let nobody, just anybody understand me if I have a plane fixed on my plane. Fool ain't gonna come up in there with, with a book talking about, I know exactly what the problem is. I had a fix in a minute. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. That's what ain't happening. Why? It's because I care more about what happens when I get in there. Yeah. I can't call this fool on the phone. <laughs> ain't no tow trucks tow you out in the middle of the air. You see what I'm saying? That's the way a lot of our lives are. The advice that you have taken, you have taken flight with. And when you found out that that information was wrong, you were in flight, so you were destined for a crash. But that's okay. You may have had a few crashes, but man, you still here. Amen. You got an opportunity to fly again. Thank you, Jesus. You got everything you need through Jesus. All we got to do is line our mouths up, our thinking up with his word. And it is his responsibility to fulfill his word. You see, when I went to work, I went to work based off of what the owner of the company told me. We had an agreement. He said, you work this many hours, I'll pay you this much per hour. And that's the agreement that I went. I never checked his bank account. I never did any of that. I never went to his home to see where he lived. I took his, I took his word, and every Friday I would get my check based off of the work that I have done. So I see the same thing when the Bible says that I, we are workers together with him, that I am employed by him. He says I am an ambassador. He has me doing his work in this. So I can come to him and say, you know what, this is what I need. I'm in trouble. I don't know how I'm going to pay it. I don't know how it's going to be done. I need your help. I can't do this. And he'll come through. You've got to know that it is relying on him. It is trusting in him that will bring you out. You have to give everything to him. You have to surrender all that you are to him and let him remake you, rebuild you, redevelop you into the person that you were designed to be. Amen. Amen. Now, the person in here, young, old, or whoever you are, was designed to lose in this life, Amen. not with Jesus, not one of you. You were designed to win. Because, see, you have the resurrected life of Christ Jesus in you. And that life will never die. You have the anointing of God resting on you and in you. And whatever you lay your hands on should prosper. There was a song back in the day called the Midas Touch. I call it the Jesus Touch. Yeah. Everything you touch, you just start saying, just start smiling and say, man, shoot, shoot, I, took a, I, I, I could touch a sour lemon and it's going to be sweet, baby. Come and give me, <laughs> make you some lemonade because of who's in you. You got to line up your mind and your thoughts. You got to say about you what God says. You are more than a conqueror. So I'm conquering debt. I'm conquering sickness. I'm conquering loneliness. I'm conquering wrong thoughts. I am more than a conqueror. So I expect to have challenges in each one of these areas. Why do I expect to have challenges in each one of these areas? Because, baby, I'm a conqueror. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. See, that's what David knew. That's what David knew when he faced his Goliath. That's right. He knew that he had a covenant with the living God of Israel. He knew. And when he stepped on the scene, his question was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine clowning y'all like this here? And you know, they was probably pissed. Come on, people, they was probably pissed. 
Here this young 17 year old boy is, you know, come out and these, these is warriors. And he talking about, he probably had peanut butter sandwich here and then walking. I mean, I mean, if they're gonna move like they're climbing out, yo, ain't nobody gonna fight. But then he went out and his first statement was, I, it, it, this is how I wanna paraphrase it. I dare you to come to me with a soul. You Philistine, I come in the name of the living God. I come in the name of the living God. He says, and I'm going to tell you, see, this is where you got to line your words up. He says, I'm going to tell you. See, the Bible says over there in Romans 4, 17 through 20, calling those things to be not what they are. See, you see it in operation there. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you today, big buddy. Hmm. Let me tell you. I'm going to cut your head off. Feed your carcasses to a bunch of birds. Mm -hmm. Now he's standing there. Now can you imagine how this giant took that? Yes, you fool. Here you are five, five. <laughs> I'm seven feet, 300 pounds, and you telling me you finna cut what? You see, David had a covenant relationship just like you do. He knew how to put his full confidence in his God, mm -hmm. in a life and death situation, mm -hmm. in a life and death situation. People, we must do that. We must have full assurance that the word that God has given us, this word, the word that God has given us, we must have full assurance that this word works. Mm -hmm. And God was so intrigued to let us know this, that in John 1 it says, and in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. and then he jumps over in 14 and says, ah, and the word was made flesh. <laughs> so the logos that you had on the pages is now rhema, and it's moving with the people. But that word is still becoming flesh in you. In you. Speak to your mountains. Speak to your situation. Well, Pastor, people don't think I'm crazy if I'm talking to my person, my wallet. They think you crazy already. Just confirm it. That's <laughs> just all you do. Just confirm it. And a lot of them, you want to you leave you alone? Let them see you doing that. You ain't got no problem. Just pick your person and start talking to them and say, hey, person, it's time for you to have some real money in it. <laughs> I'm telling you, you've got to do this because that was the example that Jesus gave us with the fig tree. He wanted us to have an example of us using the power. People, how many times have you heard God has given us all power, all authority? I think everybody here has been in church in a while. All right? Luke 10, 18. Power to walk and tread over serpents, right? Any of you got any Mac 10s, Glocks? You know, no, I, mean, I hope you don't know any church, but you know, my ass is gone. <laughs> if you do, I'm going to start having a metal detector at the door. <laughs> you know, but no, because everything he gave you is in your mouth. That's where your arsenal is. Think about it. When you cast out a demon, you've got to open your mouth up and cast it out in the name of Jesus. When you lay hands on the sick, you got to open your mouth up and pray the prayer of faith. It's in your mouth. That's why over in Proverbs it says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, that's why he's trying to get you to talk crazy, think crazy, so you can act crazy. I'm going to close with this one scripture. Turn over to uh, Proverbs 18. Check it out. See, there's a only one part of people, a lot of people quote on this scripture, okay? I hope you're getting something from this. I guess not, I didn't hear nobody. Preaching myself, putting a piece in my head and peace. <laughs> Probably 18, and I think it's uh, 18, Probably 18, 18, let's see. It, all right. Got a confirmation. 18. 16. 16. Mm 
18, 16 says a man's gift made room for him. That's 16. You said 16. All right. Right here, I got it on my notes. That's what y'all, y'all have me all up in the woods, be back in the wilderness somewhere. Go to 20. 1820. All right. Now listen to this. Now, no, go to 21. <laughs> Life and death are in the what? Power of the tongue. Come on, church, let me hear you. In the what? Power, Power of the tongue. tongue. And those who love it will Shame. eat its fruit. Yes. Okay? But now, don't stop there. We've quoted that over and over. Now go to the verse before that. A man's belly. A man's belly or a man's stomach shall be satisfied from what? The fruit of his mouth. The fruit of his mouth. It isn't a labor in your hand. Is it the fruit of your mouth? What does fruit do? It produces. He said that your belly, you know, we want to eat. So basically what it's talking about, your life will be supplied and satisfied by the fruit of your mouth. By the fruit of your mouth, you've got to watch what you're speaking. Then he drops right in the next verse and says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's why you, you, you see, that's why you hear me speak about things coming, things coming, things coming, things coming. And they come. And they come. Why? It's because I'm putting it out there in the atmosphere. You know what, I, I like this. Look, I will do that because before I learned how to shoot pool, I used to shoot balls real hard. And if I hit anything, hoping something go in. It didn't make no difference whether high ball or low ball, just drop. Okay? I'm putting it out there so if I hit anything, it'll drop in. Amen. I'm going to keep speaking it until I can see it in. I'm going to speak that business into existence. Amen. Don't you give up on your dream. You may be sitting at your job right now, but don't you give up on your dream. Amen. You keep walking into that company and you say, Lord, I thank you for my own business. Amen. Look around and see how you want it. Mm -hmm. Look around and see how you want it. See how you want things. Yeah, school. Walk that campus and say, Lord, I thank you. As I'm walking this campus, I thank you, Father, when I open my, my, my business up or my practice up, you're going to send good educated people that surround this campus. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, as I walk upon this campus. You understand me? You got to start making those confessions. You have to get up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I'm successful in everything I do today. And when your past tries to come and wreck your future, you say, hey, you know what? They got laws about drunk driving. <laughs> they ain't driving drunk no more. <laughs> you got to do that. You got to handle that with your mouth. You say, I'm not that way anymore. I don't think that way anymore. Even though you're having challenges at that moment. Say, I don't think that way no more. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Devil used a lie. That's not what the Bible tells me. It's not what I am. Uh -huh. you got to start speaking it to yourself. If you don't hear it, how do you think it's going to become reality to you? Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Not just from the preacher, from your own mouth. From your own mouth. Man, I'm anointed to preach this. And I'll preach this all across the world. God will open up doors that no man could open for me. Finances will be there. People will be there to do what needs to be done. God is sending people that have a passion for his heart. See, you've got to speak that. You've got to speak that. My children will not die, but they shall live. And everything they lay their hands on shall prosper. Why? Because they're seed from my body. And God said that everything that concerns me, he will, he will perfect. You got to speak it. The old doctor, you. I looked at my son, my grandson. <laughs> We've been praying and speaking over him. And yeah, for, for a couple of years, man, he was active. I call it active. Anything he could get into, he was in it, him and his little partner. But I wasn't able to make his first, uh, what is it? Recital. Recital, because I had just came back from the hospital. But you know what brought tears to my eyes? 
I looked on Facebook and they had put the video on Facebook and here he is, his little head just above his piano. Man, thank you, Jesus. The little boy, the teacher thought was just too bad. Head just this big, this big old piano. And he's sitting there playing. You know, lean on me, he playing. Sounded good, you ought to listen to it a hundred times. But see, that's a spoken vision. That's a spoken vision. That's a spoken vision. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a work in process. Don't deny the process. Some of the process may be painful. You may not want to go through it. But I'm here to tell you it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And as long as you know that God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That no matter what you're going through, God may be quiet at that moment in your life. But always remember this. When you were in school and test time came and the teacher said, no talking during the test. So when you're in the middle of the test, just say to yourself, no talking during the test. And you know why God ain't saying that to you. <laughs> and go through the test. Go through the test because you're going to keep going through them and your grades are going to get better and your grades are going to get better and your positions are going to get better. I have faith in the God in you. Even when you lose hope in yourself, I will never do that. Why? Because somebody didn't lose hope in me. But all right, I understand what Paul says that I am not worthy. There's so many others. All you got to do is stay faithful to God. Go home, get your house in order. Sit down with your spouse and sit down with your children and say, what do we need to do to get this house in order? What do you see this out of order? Don't you be the only one with, the, with, with tunnel vision because you can, see, you can see only what you want to see. Ask everybody else, what do we need to do? This is where we want to be in, uh, in a year. This is where we want to be in two years. Map your thing out. See, and people say, well, that's not faith. That's planning. You're a lie. Why does it say over there in Jeremiah 29, he says, I know the thoughts and the plans. God's a planner. Huh? When he planted Adam and Eve, he had a plan for Abraham. Uh-huh. See? When he called Abraham, he had a plan for the nation. You got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. How does that saying go? A person that don't plan is a person that plans to fail. I'm trying to tell you, go home, go home and spend some time. Pray about it. Pray about it. Your house. What kind of house you want in five years, three years, whatever you want. How do you want to rechange your house? Start making your plans. Live by faith. When you walk in your house and you can say, man, God did this. You can tell people, man, I couldn't do this. Man, I ain't had none of this. This God did this. God did that. You can give, because see, that's how God gets his glory. Man, I ain't smart enough to run this business, man. Not like this. That's God. You see what I'm saying? Amen? Amen. 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 Look at your name and say, I don't know about you, but I'm getting my house in order. I'm getting my house in order. Thank you again, man, to God for being obedient to my, for that word. Amen. And any of you that you feel that God has spoken to your heart and you have a message for this body of believers here, please come to me and tell me, all right? Because it is very important because when that comes, that means that God is doing a shifting. He's doing a shifting. He's doing a rearranging, okay? And we want to stay in tune with God. Amen? Amen? Amen, people. God is doing something. God is doing something. I mean, just, just take, our, take a glance around. Look, look around. You guys look around. You know, look, God's going to fill this house. And, I, and that's where my faith is. Before December, God's going to fill this house. You understand me? My faith don't stop here. God's going to fill this house, and we're going to go to two services. He's going to fill this house. He's going to fill this house in the name of Jesus. He would have never put 68 chairs in this building if he didn't intend to fill them. Because I didn't want to buy them. Shoot, 20 was good with me. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, watch and see. Watch and see. Uh, I shared with the uh, early morning prayer team 
we have a praise report from, um, was that St. Paul where? Minnesota. 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 Uh, Mindy and uh, Elder Petrina went down there and God just showed out down there. People were delivered, slain in the spirit, just laid out. Just laid out. And they want, you know, the women to come down in August, okay? And they'll be contacting us. And God is just, you know, open. Open a door there, Pastor Tamong. He is a beautiful man of God. I have not met him in person. We only talked on the phone. And that man is on fire for God. He is on fire for God. But see, that's what this ministry is about. It's about launching people into their destiny. Whether it doesn't have to be ministry, it could be business. Because if you are in business, that's a ministry itself. That's the ministry itself. See, people think that only preaching is ministry. But remember when you go and you read the book of Nehemiah? Nehemiah wasn't a priest. He wasn't, he was, man, he was just a man with a good job that had a heart and decided to go do so. He was just an average Joe that had a heart that God used. See, it's not all about just ministry. We're, 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 we're leaving God to develop musicians, to develop business people, to develop ministry people, to develop. Man, that's why I told you, man. I told you. When you see that shop, it's on Vermont, brother. Man, I've seen it. I've seen it. You're doing too much work from the back of your house, man. This brother got people driving all across town. The back of his garage, and then he moved to a new house. And you know you're good when people follow you for a further distance. <laughs> They're still coming. I said, man. But he, you know what? He stepped out in faith. There's those of you, man, look at here. That girl can make pastry. Understand me? And they say in that movie Friday, make you slap your mama. Understand me? Don't y'all go do that now. <laughs> but she makes some pastry. And that's sad, man. Look at it. I seen a man at the church I was attending had a, 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 a van. And he'd be at the back of the gate on, on, on the back side of Crenshaw Christian Center. And what he would do, he'd make pies. And people got wind that them pies was good. And after church, people were lined up. The man was taking orders for next Sunday. He did that, man. He did that for about a year or two. And, and I looked up, man. He had a nice van, refrigeration all in it and stuff, man. And then he started doing uh, 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 holidays, you know, taking order for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Man, he made a game of money. Yeah, he did. From slinging them pies. And I ain't talking about bean pies. All right? He made a game. But he had a dream, and God honored that. What is your dream, people? What is your vision? You hold on to it. That's why I say it again. Let us hold tight to the profession of our faith. To him who is faithful. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, who is to do? Uh, I am. Okay. Come here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. To everyone that's watching us, thank you for tuning in tonight or today. Or whatever time it is, wherever you're at, you know. Sure. We thank you. We thank you for coming. Uh, we really appreciate you. Just allowing us into your home is a blessing. It is true blessing. We thank you for the many testimonies that we have received from you, and we continue to pray for you. We just, we just want you to know we love you. God bless you. We hope to, see, you know, we hope that you're able to visit with us. You know, if you're in the city of Los Angeles or in the area, please come by. Come by, say hello. Okay. I love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope, I hope all of you, oh, you can start coming up. I hope all of you that are here today are here next week because I have some testimonies of some miraculous things. We have been